Thanks for the support as a channel member, Nathan Carrick. Right, we need to settle something. Last week, I wore this yellow shirt, and then the comments were absolutely full of people telling me, Kev, that shirt's not yellow. You're a crazy person. And he, I even mentioned in the video that the green screen would mess it up. So, to prove I'm not insane, take the green screen magic away. It's a yellow shirt. Hello and welcome to Club 4, part 25 of Not Need to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our fourth game in this season's Champions League group stage. If we win this, we are through to the knockout rounds with two games to spare, which is worlds apart from where we were in the Champions League two years ago. Uh, we've also got a league game away against Birmingham. Since you were last with me, um, we've pretty much been doing really rather well, apart from this one game against Manchester United, where I just got things a little bit wrong. Um, in some of these bigger away games, the Man City game, I think, because I don't think that one was in a video. The Man City game, in fact, I can just look. The Man City game, I think we went there with the diamond. We did. We went there with the diamond, but with a cautious mentality away from home, and it worked. So Manchester United at home, I got scared and did the cautious mentality at home. It didn't work, and that's, that's why we lost. It was my fault. So my plan now is big away games, cautious mentality diamond, home games and other games, games that we should win, positive mentality diamond. And we do we tweak some of the instructions and stuff as well when we make it cautious. So that's the current plan. Um, let's see what Past Kev planned for Stuttgart. He did plan the cautious version of it. Good work, Past Kev, um, which, as you can see, involves switching Jair right back to a, a support mentality rather than an attacking mentality. Um, and it also, which I haven't done, means switching Vermonti to a defensive mentality rather than a support mentality. And this is the, the sort of away game version of that system. And we get to see, hopefully, see it work against Stuttgart as we secure a spot in the knockout rounds of the Champions League. So we've got Francisco in goal, a back four of Sessegnon, Fodderingham, and Banfalvi and Jair, Vermonti at the base of the midfield, Rott and Gravenberch ahead of him, Ali behind George and Fernando up front. Um, Carlos, just we're just rotating around a little bit. We're, they're playing a lot of games at the moment. George needs game time. Fernando's the one who's in super do perform at the moment. He's just off the back of a hat-trick in the Premier League. So he, uh, he can start with George today and Carlos is there ready to play in the next league game or just... They're, all three of them are going to get lots of game time this season. I don't think we need to worry about that. Right, let's, um, yeah, secure first round qualification. I think that's what that team talk was. We'll do it cautious, not cautiously, calmly. We're going to play cautiously, talk calmly. It's all very confusing. Uh, but the other thing, of course, is if Celtic can get a result against Juventus... That helps as well, although having said that, Juventus have already gone 1-0 up. I mean, they are at home against Celtic, so you would expect Juventus to win that game. Just as you'd probably expect us to potentially struggle away from home against Stuttgart. I'd, I'd be happy with a draw. Um, that's kind of the theory behind the cautious tactic. If we go into a game with the cautious mentality... We're going into it thinking we're happy just not conceding a goal today. If we happen to win the game, that would be lovely. Deli Ali scores a goal there, for example. If stuff like that happens, all the better. But the real goal of this more cautious version is to just not concede. And if we do get to do a counter-attack, then so be it. Vermonti is very far forward for a, uh, for a man who's supposed to be playing on a defensive mentality. But, I mean, it worked. And it was an excellent counter-attack. And Deli Ali, he hasn't scored as much this year as he was last year despite playing back in his preferred position again as the attacking midfielder. It's almost as if he actually suits playing out wide as an inside forward better. But we're not doing that anymore. We like this system. And uh, we're 1-0 up at half-time, which is exactly what we came to do. Interestingly, 67% of the... Oh, wrong team talk. I was trying to do the... I was trying to do the... the uh, I wanted to do the don't get complacent one, and I don't know what I clicked give the fans their money's worth, which is weird when I'm saying that, but then also telling them to play cautiously. Give the fans their money's worth. They're they love defending. Just defend like you've never defended before. Um, Deli Ali cannot quite get hold of the uh, of the ball on the edge of the area there, and we're, we're defending resolutely. Lots of men behind the ball, um, forcing Stuttgart to have to shoot from range, and 
I'm happy with just forcing them to shoot from range. If they happen to score a screamer, then so be it. Like I said, we're, we're here really to just not lose. The fact that we're ahead with 25 minutes to go, big old bonus. Sessignon plays it in field to Ali. Gravenberch back to Sessignon again. We have got our two strikers lined up in the middle, but it's with Ali who can slide it through to Gravenberch. There, there is Gravenberch with the shot. And nine times out of 10, he scores that. This time, doesn't even test the goalkeeper. And with 20 minutes to go, we're gonna we're gonna bring Carlos on. George hasn't played very well, has he? Um, to be fair, neither is Fernando. But we only have the one striker down on the bench. I guess we could put Ali up front and bring Vargas or someone on in the midfield, or even Jaden Sancho could come on and play as the attacking midfielder. In fact, I think I am leaning towards doing that as we are training Sancho to play as an attacking midfielder. As nobody seems to want to buy him, we may as well train him to to do a role that fits in our system. Um, we'll make Deli Ali a deep line forward. Sancho can play in there as an uh, attacking midfielder. And Carlos can come on up front and hopefully be as good as we've seen him play in some of the recent episodes. Gravenberch not playing fantastically either and also tiring. We've got Vargas who can come on in midfield. So that is an easy substitution to make. And hopefully with 10 minutes to go, we just see out the rest of this game. An efficient win, we'll call this, if we if we do end up winning it. Let's not count our chickens. But there's there's two minutes left. If we mess it up from here, then heads will roll. We haven't messed it up. And we are through to the knockout rounds of the Champions League. We've, we've slowly but surely, it's taken two years, but we have actually built a good Tottenham team now. We can take it easy in these last couple of qualifying games because not only have we qualified for the next round, but because Juventus have had that have, haven't been quite as effective as I would have expected them to be, we're pretty much already top of the group as well. One more point and we end up topping the group. So we really can take it easy in these last couple of games and get to the point where we can go to Juventus. I mean, if we win the, if we win the home game against Celtic, we'll go to Juventus already guaranteed to be top of the group and that game just won't matter which is the absolute most perfect scenario we could have hoped for when these when this group was drawn a little bit of rotation for the Birmingham game then you know how I like to do a little bit of rotation after a big away game in the Champions League we've switched back to the positive version of the tactic so Jair and Vargas both going to be a little bit more attacking and made a number of changes as well so it's Francisco in goal as a party at the left back Milenkovic, Banfalvi and Jair the rest of the defence Vargas comes in at the base of the midfield Victor and Fodderingham ahead of him with Gibbs White playing behind Rosso and George up front today. A rare run out for, for Rosso and Gibbs White, actually, and Dave Azapardi as well. The three of them struggling a little bit for football this season. So let's throw them into the team for a game we would expect to win and hopefully win the game. It all makes sense. Um, Dave Azapardi is a problem is a sentence I've said many times over the years. Um, but with him being a right-footed left-back, which I did know before I signed him, um, I, I feel like I should probably be training him to play right-back because an inverted wing-back doesn't really work in a system where our only width comes from our uh, comes from our wing-backs. But you can see just how in-field he naturally tucks because he's constantly coming in on his right foot. So I guess it is a different kind of attacking wing-back. I don't know that it works. Rosso's just got his second goal of the season, though. Everybody told me that man would never be a striker. Well, he's play barely played any football this year. And the, the times he has played, he scores goals. So he's not, but certainly not bad as a fourth choice striker. And it's a, I mean, it's a solid header. Lovely stuff. Remind, reminds me a lot of Luke Plange. Good in the air. Good team player. Very good as a second striker. Um, but doesn't necessarily, uh, doesn't necessarily score quite as many goals as you would expect. If you don't know who Luke Plange is, you should be watching the Bourne series. It's awesome. What? Go watch it, 7 o'clock tonight. You'll enjoy it. You don't, don't even worry about catching up. Just watch it, 7 o'clock tonight. You'll have a lot of fun, and then you'll want to go and catch up. Milenkovic plays it across to Banfalvi, who finds Jair in space, ready to do some Jair things. He doesn't do any. He just plays it to Fodderingham, who, back to Vargas. Jair's ready, though. Look at him hovering out wide. Here is Azapardi. Hits the inside of the post, I think. Come on now, it's Monday. Why are the bin men here? We know the bin men are the star of the Thursday videos, usually. I haven't put my bins out. It's it's the green bins. It's the, the garden waste. I haven't cut my grass for three years. I don't have a green bin. I don't know which one caused the other one, but 
I don't want a green bin and I certainly don't feel like cutting the grass. I'd rather just get a goat. Right, half time, one nil up. A lot of similarities with the Stuttgart game. Bearing in mind we're supposedly playing a very different system. We don't seem to be necessarily playing gung-ho attacking football. But then I suppose we're playing very different players. And it's not our first choice superstars who are out there. Although there's not really anyone in that team that you'd look at and think, ooh, not really good enough to play for Spurs. I guess maybe... I, you know what? There isn't anybody. I look at that 11. Even Russo, who I guess is the most borderline one, he's the one who scored and he's playing better than anybody else. So, there's yeah, there's nobody in there that you'd think isn't good enough to play for us. So you would expect us to be doing a little bit better against Birmingham. Here is Jair, though, doing some Jair things. He is through and it's a, it's a good, decent effort that is saved by the Birmingham keeper, but we win a corner. To be fair to Birmingham, looking at the league table, they are seventh in the league, so... I'm actually probably being a little bit harsh on them, expecting us to just come here and win 8-0. But, you know, in my head, they're real-life Birmingham, not football manager Birmingham, um, who have just... They've been dragged up to this level by Jude Bellingham, who, for some reason, in this version of history, never left. And has just dragged the rest of the club up to his level. No man's bigger than a football club, apart from Bellingham at Birmingham in this save, where he's turned Birmingham into a major Premier League club. Um, right, we're going to bring Rot on for... Gibbs White, it was a really a toss-up between Gravenberch and Rott. Um, I've gone with the assistant manager who wanted Rott rather than Gravenberch. I'm going to bring Gravenberch on anyway. He can play in midfield. Jao Victor can drop back into that role. And that looks like a very tasty-looking midfield now for these final 20 minutes of the game. I'm, I probably need to get Antonio Carlos on as well. He's barely featured in this episode, despite him being our new hero. So let's bring him on for George. Um, he can play up front with Russo. Of course, the two of them arriving at the same time nearly a year ago now. It was in the January transfers. It was probably around this time last season. What has just happened? I hope that's being disallowed. What's happening out there? My word. Has it been disallowed? It has been disallowed. Don't really know what for. Offside. There we go. That I can uh, I can now get on board with. But yeah, it was it was around this time last year that I was probably putting the the move together to sign both of those, and then they arrived at the start of January. Um, I think I think we're slowly but surely reaching the point where we'd consider both of them to be successful transfers at this point, which is a lovely situation to be in. Um, if that's no, it's not foddering him anymore, is it? He went off. That's Jao Victor now. I think not able to get that tackle in, and Dave has a party with a lovely assist for Birmingham. He'll love that. As a Wolves fan, what's he done there? What has he done there? That was some pretty terrible defending. We should all now tweet at Dave Azapardi, make a gif, send that to him, show him, show him what he's done, because this is <laughs> this is going to be a theme of the series now. Every time Dave messes up, we've got to tweet at him. If you don't know who Dave Azapardi is, go and watch his videos. I assume he still makes football manager videos. I'll level with you. I haven't got a clue. But I assume he probably does. Uh, Gravenberch with the corner. Have we got time to, to grab a late winner, which we absolutely should be getting? We're going to show some passion for the last few minutes. We are attacking Gravenberch with the corner. Corner comes in. This is another one of those Champions League hangover nonsense games, isn't it? Where you lot will all argue, Kev, you didn't win because you rotated so much. And I'll argue we weren't going to win anyway, so I may as well rotate. And no one will ever know who was right. But like I said, it wasn't as if we played a bunch of 12-year-olds. That was a team that should have been able to beat Birmingham and didn't. And the team only got stronger as the game went on as well when we brought in Gravenberch, Rott and Carlos. And that's when we conceded the goal. So it's just Champions League hangover, isn't it? At least we're up in the Champions League spots in the league at the moment as well, up in fourth place. Right, we will... I still kind of want to show you the Juventus game because I think it will be interesting. But then we have already seen Juventus this season, so we might just go all the way through to, I don't know, to hear some of the FA Cup third rounds taking place in December this year, apparently. I don't want to go all the way beyond the transfer window now because it's only early November and that's that's too many matches. So we probably will still show Juventus tomorrow unless something more interesting presents itself between now and then. If you have enjoyed that, though, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos. Feel free to apologise down in the comments for telling me this wasn't a yellow shirt. And thank you very much for watching.